Hi everyone. In this video, I'm going to go over one version of what's called, you know, the sunken vessel question. And this can be set up a few ways. Um, this one's going to end up being a two triangle, right angle triangle problem, but there's other ways that you can set it up uh, where you don't actually get right angle triangles. But anyway, let's go through and see if we can figure out what the diagram looks like and then try to solve this problem. So a radar operator on a ship discovers a large sunken vessel lying parallel to the ocean surface. Okay, lying parallel to the ocean surface. Uh, that just means that it's like flat on the ocean bottom, right? Parallel means the same direction as. So it is lying flat on the ocean bottom. The ocean surface is 85 meters directly below the ship. The length of the vessel is a clue to which wreck has been found. The radar operator measures the angles of depression to the front and back of the sunken vessel to be 61 and 42 degrees, respectively. How long to the nearest tenth of a meter is the sunken vessel? All right, so um, let's see if we can set up a diagram for this. So this is his boat, and there we go. There's a little sail, so we know it's a boat. And I guess that's on the surface of the water. And there's some sunken vessel down below on the ocean surface. So the ocean surface, um, I don't have brown, so I guess maybe my ocean surface will be pink. So there's my ocean surface. And at the bottom of the ocean, there is a boat. Let's make it red, why not? So this is the unknown sunken vessel. And there we'll put some smokestacks on it, like the Titanic or whatever. Okay, cool. So there's our fancy uh, sunken vessel. Now, angle of depression means the angle from the boat going down to the boat. And actually, let's color code these. Let's do one yellow, one green, why not? Okay, so this angle is going to be 42 degrees. And this yellow angle here is going to be, uh, what is it, 61 degrees. Okay, so um, let's go through and set up how we can solve this. So we actually have more information to, than this. I guess we should fill that in as well. Um, this is 61 degrees here. Okay, we also know how far the ship is above the ocean floor, which is 85 meters. 85 meters. Okay, cool. So we actually have two different triangles here. And this is one of the key skills for working with multi-triangle problems is figuring out, you know, how to redraw the triangles in ways that make it easier to solve. So this triangle here, I'm drawing it this way because we know this angle here is 61 degrees. So since that angle there is 61 degrees, it has to be taller than it is wide. And this is 85 meters here. And the other one's 42 degrees. So 42 degrees is sort of, you know, just less than halfway. And then this is the other triangle. These are both right angle triangles. It doesn't say in the question, but from context, we can assume that the ocean floor is flat. Otherwise we can't really solve this. So we have two triangles to solve. And then the length of the ship is going to be like part of this length here. Right. And this length, this bottom length here is actually like the yellow triangle goes across to here. And then the ship makes up the last piece. So our strategy to figure out the length of the ship is going to be to figure out this entire length from that point all the way across to the end of the ship. And then what we're going to do is we're going to subtract this part we don't want. So we're going to do the full thing minus this amount here. And this is often a skill that comes up in multi-triangle problems. You've got overlapping triangles and your, your final value, your X, if you will, is going to be like the difference between two lengths. So we've got two triangles here. We've got one length, we've got one angle, but they're 90 degree triangles. So we can solve both of these with sine, cosine, or tangent. Now, first of all, um, there's two ways you can find your missing angle. I guess I'll do, I'll, I'll do the two triangles two different ways. The first one I'll do is I'll do, I'll find this angle up here and I can find this angle up here by subtracting from 90 degrees, right? Since this thing here is 90 degrees, then the missing angle up here is going to be 90 degrees minus 61 degrees. They're called complementary angles and you get that it is 29 degrees. So this angle up here is 29 degrees. So now we can actually set up our SOHCAHTOA, if you will. Um, there's other ways of doing sine, cosine, and tangent, but um, I'll show SOHCAHTOA because that's the most commonly taught one, um, at least 
in Alberta, it seems to be. Most teachers teach Sokotoa. So this is our hypotenuse because it's across from the right angle. Now from our 29 degrees, this side is our opposite and this side is our adjacent. And we want to find this one here. Let's call that X, I guess. We're trying to find X. So we care about the opposite because that's what we're trying to find. And we care about the adjacent because that's the side that we know. So if we want adjacent and opposite, this is going to be a tangent problem. So we are going to set up TOA. And this means that the tangent of our angle equals a fraction of the opposite divided by the adjacent. Our opposite in this case is our x, our unknown, and our adjacent is the 85 meters. Okay, and so now we're trying to solve for x. x is being divided by 85. So that means that x is, we're gonna bring the 85 up front, 85 times tangent of 29 degrees. Now one thing, before I go into the calculator, I'm just gonna double check in my mode screen that I am in fact in degrees mode, which you can see right here. If you've got a scientific calculator, you probably have a button that says DRG, and somewhere on your display it should say DEG, which means that you are in degrees mode. And if you aren't sure, um, one thing you can do really quickly is you can do sine of 30 and you should get 0.5. Okay, so if, you, if sine of 30 is 0 0.5, then that means that you are correctly in degree mode. Okay, so now I'm just going to plug this into my calculator. 85 times uh, tangent of 29. And this gives us our first step. So x is 47 point, let's write three decimal places. You always want to keep extra decimal places in your intermediate steps to make sure your final answer is rounded correctly. Um, in this case, I'm actually going to use this entire variable. In fact, if you've got one of these fancy graphing calculators, I'll show you something cool you can do. I can store store this with the stow key, and I can hit alpha, um, where's x? There's x right there. So now I can actually store this value in x. So if I do alpha x, then x is 47.11626937. Cool, so I can actually just use x in place of this number, this 47.116, anytime I like. Okay, so now let's move on to this next triangle. So this next triangle is going to be the same idea, except I'm going to show you another way to get an angle. The other way you can get an angle is you can use something called the Z rule. So there's this like Z shape here. And because these two lines are parallel, that means that this angle here has to be the same as this angle here. So that's your parallel line rules. I'm just going to erase that so we don't go over our yellow and red lines. But since this is 42 inside the Z up here, this is 42 degrees down here as well. Right? And this sort of comes from your parallel line rules. If you've got a transversal of a parallel line, then all of these acute angles, all four of those acute angles are the same. So in this case, we've got like one side of a Z and another side of a Z. Here's our, here's our Z. Sorry, let me change colors. There's our Z. So you can see that those two angles are in fact the same. Okay. Anyway, that's where, this, that's where the Z rule comes from. So in this case, since this is 42 degrees, I need to label my triangle differently. That makes this side my hypotenuse and then opposite the 40, sorry, it's H, then opposite my 42 degrees is my opposite, and this side is my adjacent. So it's still going to be TOA, because we care about, um, let's call it Y, I guess. We care about Y down here. Um, what color have I not used? I haven't used this shade of pink, I don't think. So we'll call that Y. Um, and in this case, Y is our adjacent, because we're using this angle down here versus this triangle up, we used this angle up here, that became our opposite. Because we're using this angle, 85 is our opposite. And 85 we will also use. So it's still going to be TOA, but in this case, we know our opposite, we don't know our adjacent. So tan of 42 degrees equals a fraction, and it's opposite, 85 meters, divided by y. Now this one's a little bit trickier. Because y is in the denominator, our first step is we're going to need to multiply both sides by y to get y um, out of our denominator. So we're gonna cancel those two. So we have y times 10, 42 degrees equals 85. And then this, this 10, 42 degrees we're going to divide by. So 10 over 10 cancels. 
So y is 85 divided by tan 42. So 85 divided by tangent 42 equals 94.4. So y is 94.402. Okay, and I'm going to store that in alpha y so that I've got it uh, stored into my calculator variables. So now let's go back to our original diagram. Um, actually, let me just redraw it. Okay, because we don't need the angles and stuff anymore. So here is our situation. We've got this. We've got our boats up here. And we have two triangles. We've got this triangle here. And we've got, actually, I guess it was taller than it was wide, wasn't it? So we've got this triangle over here. And then we've got our other triangle. What color was it? Uh, green. Okay. And we've got our other triangle out here. Okay. And we know that this is 47.116 meters. And we know that this whole thing across here was 94.404 or 402 rather meters. So then what we want to solve, let's call it Z, I guess. So then Z is going to be 94.402 minus the 47.116 that we have there. And because I stored it in my calculator variables, I can just do y minus x. And my answer is z equals 47.2857 and so on. And if we go back to the original question, it asked for the nearest tenth. So because this is an eight, we round it up to 47.3 meters. And there is your final answer, 47.3 meters long.